is a rule in my hometown that you should never acknowledge an unwanted passenger in your car. I come from a quaint little town in Ireland that most tourists would regard as picturesque. We get our fair share of tourists throughout the year as they love to wander the walking trails that crisscross the outskirts. From the outside our town would be regarded as perfect but we hide a dark secret that only the inhabitants know about. I learned about the secret during my first driving lesson with my mother. I was beyond stressed that morning as my mother is a perfectionist and I didn't want to disappoint her. We started off slowly as she taught me to drive down the narrow roadways. My hands had a vice-like grip on the steering wheel as I was paranoid that I was going to make a mistake. I kept glancing at my mother out of the corner of my eye to judge her reaction to my driving. We were driving almost a half hour when I looked into the rearview mirror and spotted the smiling man sitting in the backseat. I was so shocked that I almost spun the steering wheel and crashed into the ditch. My mother screamed at me to keep driving and whatever I do don't turn around. My eyes were fixated on the mirror as I stared at the man who had suddenly appeared in our backseat. His face was somehow clouded in shadow even though it was a beautiful sunny day outside. The only features of his face that I could make out were his eyes which were a sickly green. His mouth was twisted into a snarling smile that made me want to jump out of the car. I watched in horror as he started reaching forward with his long spindly arms towards me. I was paying so much attention to him that I had taken my feet off the gas pedal and we were slowing down. My mother slapped me across the face and yelled at me to drive faster. I sped up and watched in relief as his arms slowly withdrew back towards his body. He leaned his head forward and opened his mouth, and a plethora of voices began pleading for help. I instinctively covered my ears with my hands which forced my mother to grab the steering wheel. It took me a few seconds to regain my composure and I grabbed the steering wheel. My entire body was on edge as the cries coming from his mouth reached a deafening crescendo. In the blink of an eye the smiling man vanished leaving me and my mother alone in the car. I pulled the car off to the side of the road and proceeded to vomit out my breakfast. The local police officer drove by and stopped to see what was wrong. He gave me a nod of approval as my mother explained that we had an extra guest in our backseat. We drove home in silence and I tried to venture the subject with her on a number of occasions but she refused to talk about it. I learned from a few other people that he has been appearing in cars for almost 70 years. No one knows anything about him but they all warned me to never turn to face him. I moved away to college a few months afterwards and over time forgot about about the smiling man. I started dating a guy named Mike that I met in my history class. We were both a bit shy so no one knew that we were actually a couple. It started getting serious with Mike so I decided to bring him home to meet my mother. I was a bit nervous about how she would react to him. We were just driving into the town when I spotted the smiling man once again sitting in my backseat. The blood drained from my face as we locked eyes in the mirror. Mike suddenly jumped in his seat as he must have noticed the smiling man. I shouted at him not to turn around but it was already too late. The smiling man's grin widened as Mike turned in his chair to look at him. There was a blinding flash that caused me to jam on the brakes. I was suddenly drenched in blood and body parts as Mike's body exploded. I climbed out of the car and on the road weeping as Mike's body flowed out of the car and pooled on the ground. I was discovered by the same officer who tried his best to comfort me. It took me almost two weeks to get myself cleaned up as I kept finding pieces of Mike in my hair. I went back to college almost three months later and felt my heart drop as I spotted posters hanging everywhere with Mike's face plastered all over them. A woman saw me looking at them and asked me for help locating her missing son. I excused myself and practically ran away. I didn't have the heart to tell her that her son is buried in a small field in the middle of nowhere. I am now living with an abusive husband who beats me on a daily basis. I have managed to convince him to travel to my hometown with me, and I hope that I will get an opportunity to introduce him to the smiling man during our visit.